Are you looking for a faster video? Well, today it's a live stream and I know you're probably looking for a really nice and tidy edited down video, but I have ways for you to make it faster. You can click video that well gear to on the YouTube settings right there on the video and adjust the playback speed. Make me sound like a chipmunk and it'll go a lot faster. You can also look and see if there's timestamps for this project in the description. And if you're on a desktop, you can hover over the time bar at the bottom of the screen and see if it's chunked up into chapters. And then that way you can go directly to the step you're looking for. And lastly, you can also tap on the screen on the right hand side of the video picture or on the left hand side to make the video jump ahead forward or backward if you're on a mobile device. And you can adjust that amount in your settings so you can have complete control over how much it jumps. So if you are on a desktop, you can use the fast forward or the rewind and that will make it fast go faster as well. <laughs> Did I accidentally click that? Well, I'm sorry, I interrupted your intro. I was trying to scroll down. Do you guys want the jingle? <laughs> I just did my little Instagram thing. Here, I'll give you the jingle. That way, if you're running to get a snack, you know I'm, I'm live. Okay, is that better? Sorry about that. I was trying to be slick and get my, all my scenes in on the on the screen. That was a bad idea. Let's see if I can do it now without clicking another scene. Scene meaning like, like this is a scene and the iron is a scene and my machine is a scene. That's how it is. <laughs> Hi Beverly. Hi Dar. Hi Delwyn. Hey Ray. Yeah, I know. I know, right? <clears throat> And I also know that some folks need things to like be in their order. So, hey Barbara, hey Carrie, you got the notification, that's great. That's awesome. I know, those notifications are really, really crazy. My hair was clipped in there. <laughs> so I have to tell you guys, I just made a trailer for the laundry basket pattern. I know, the laundry basket pattern doesn't need a trailer, like it's, like it's such a minor little pattern, but it's a great, like I thought of doing it and I was like, oh, this is, this is a good one to practice on because it's really easy to find things to make it a trailer. Like I can show it laundry going into the basket, the fact that you can carry it upstairs with one hand, you know, stuff like that. And it seemed kind of flat without music and I only needed like 20 seconds. And man, I looked and looked and looked and looked and looked. And then I just put my jingle on it and I was like, this works, but I think they're gonna kill me if I put the jingle on a, on a pattern trailer, trailer. So I need to find something else. It's on my website right now, cause I haven't even announced anything, but I need to figure it out. Although also I think my website, something's wrong with it. So, <laughs> hi Hannah. <laughs> yeah, oh nice. Right after you joined. Hey Julia, hey Malin. <clears throat> welcome you guys welcome welcome um, all right so if you're new here I'm Sarah me and usually my routine will be this month is a little different I keep saying that right but this month is a little different usually Wednesdays I cut something out it's Thursday I sew part one Saturday I sew part two and this month and into November, October we're going to be doing a blazer sew along and anyone's invited to do it, any blazer, coat, jacket, whatever you wanna do. And this week I'm just spending time kind of fitting it and checking out how I want my blazer to fit and kind of at the same time, like I kind of get down these experiment rabbit holes. And so sometimes I'll even scrap what I do and start over just to see if fitting it another way comes up with the same result. I may do that today, that's why I'm saying that. Um, and I think that's helpful because then people are like, oh, I could go about it this other way because that might work better for your fit constraints, right? And then after this week, I'll only sew the blazer on Saturdays just to give most people the opportunity to kind of chip away at their project, whatever they're working on, and not feel overwhelmed with such like such a mysterious project. I feel like the blazer like jeans has this mystique about it that kind of is this barrier for, to you to sew it. And I don't want barriers for you guys to sew anything. And I think if you spend time here enough, you know that 
also whatever, like I, I'm up for, down for anything. Please don't make me sew burlap, fake fur, or a wedding dress though. But um, I, other than that, like, you know, my bucket list has an astronaut um, costume, not costume, but like astronaut, you know, outfit on it. So that's, that's, I'm like, I'm down. <laughs> so I'll do whatever. And I want you guys to feel that kind of, um, like no trepidation going into a project, break it down into small little bite-sized chunks. If you want it, do it. So, right. I know Malin, you know, Malin, I, so I, okay. I have a video of how my um, jacket fit me yesterday and I did pin it in this video. So I wanted to share that with you just in case some of you are on Instagram or don't keep up on there. Let's see. Why can I never remember what I'm looking at? Me and computer. There we go. <laughs> Not funny. All right, so here is a video of me wearing this. Um, and so after the stream, I put it on and I pinned it um, kind of to death there going up through the shoulder. You can see above the armhole and everything. That's the lapels folding back. I did a small bust adjustment on this yesterday and that's pretty much the only change I did. And the bust is hugely baggy up there. Look at that. That's like almost two inches that I'm taking out and I go, the shoulder is too far out on me. And obviously like this jacket isn't lined. It's not my actual fabric. I need to bear those things in mind. I probably wouldn't be wearing it over a lightweight dress, right? I'd be wearing it maybe over a long sleeve shirt because it's typically a cooler weather garment. So I'm trying to think about those things. And so then I, I fiddled with the fiddle bit. Um, I didn't do any pattern alterations without you. I just kind of fiddled with the fit a bit. You know how my dress form right here. I'm, a, I'm like, things kind of fit differently on the dress form. This carpet does not like my dress form. <laughs> so let's see, see here. And this is me, like I've poked and prodded all over it. This is not what you saw in the video anymore, but um, I am playing around with it. This is all pinned right here through the bust. And you can see that's like way better. And I know, I know it's really hard to see at this angle and things that usually look better from um, on the camera, like this far away. But you, you would be kind of shocked at how much this gaped. It did this. It kind of did this big, I could literally put my whole hand in there at the top, but below it, it fit pretty good. <clears throat> oh, <laughs> I was like, wait, what is your name? I thought you were writing with love, Stephanie. <laughs> I'm doing my best. So I think, um, Close our perpetual request from Terry. <laughs> Look where that got me. <laughs> I made her a mod. <laughs> Hi, Sarah. How's it going? So um, I think that my fitting journey really, I'm hoping will illustrate to you that not every sewist has the answers to know exactly what they should do right away. Because even I was like, all right, I can do these changes. You know, I can take out this amount above the bust here. Um, I needed to add back to my front waist because I took out two inches across the front because of that small bust adjustment. Um, cause I went all the way down and, and admittedly, um, I don't, I've never done a small bust adjustment. So yesterday when I was doing it, I, I totally forgot to do my hinge the wrong way, all that. Right. So if, you're kind of like, you know, should I do these things or not? I feel like there's multiple ways to go about it. And so when I started really getting kind of deep into it, I didn't get that deep into it, but I did spend a bit of time yesterday. So I removed a little around this armhole and I put the same exact sleeve back on because I wanted to know, am I going to have to decrease the volume of my sleeve? Because I really don't want to. For me, the fitting pet peeves in my life are the fact that things get hung up in my back waist because I have a backwards hip tilt, which also makes my belly protrude even bigger, more than it would if I didn't have that. And I don't like being bound up up here. Like that's just something I really, really don't like. It's why I don't like a lot of cut on sleeves. I really like a set in sleeve or an armhole, you know? So 
Yeah, right, Ray, exactly. Hi, Margie, how's it going? Yeah, so, so I started thinking about it more and more, and then I printed out the original um, of the one I sewed yesterday. So meaning, that didn't make any sense what I just said. So this is the pieces that I did the small bust adjustment on. So then I printed one out that has no, no changes to it and I only printed it in my size. And this is pretty cool that they allow you to print on, like they print a grid. You can turn off this grid, but wow, that is pretty cool. I didn't know, I don't think I've ever printed out a cashmere pattern. I didn't know this was an option. So this is my pattern pieces before these changes. When I started looking at the fact that I need to take out quite a bit in this back here, let me um, unpin this here. So I ended up taking it in right here on the sewing machine and, and, I, and I did it all the way down. Then I was like, you know, that's probably too much. So I took it out of the bottom of the hip and kind of swung it out. And I was like, yeah, that's not gonna work because when I'm wearing it and when I see it in that video, to me, it looks like the back waist is a little bit loose. And I was thinking, well, maybe if I just made the back hip a little bigger, the back waist would relax a little bit and it wouldn't look so big. It would kind of just gently fall, right? And I want some room over my clothes. So I, I you know, just took in the waist and I let the hip be. And then I was like, wow, the back hip is actually really big. It's just hard to tell. And it's partly because this front belly got so, so much smaller, it's pulling the back across. And I always have to worry about that with my hip back hip adjustment. So, so then I was like, all right, let's just pin that out. And it's, it's literally like two and a half inches total right there. And I need two inches in the front because you can even see it's like not, I don't know if you can see this at all, but you can see it's not going to button down there. There's only, um, just so you guys, if you guys are fitting this particular blazer, by the way, this is the Auburn blazer by Cashmerette. That's the one I chose to do because it has lots and lots of sizes. And it's just a very a vanilla classic blazer with a princess seam, which I thought was pretty cool. So this front seam here where you're gonna attach your um, collar, it has only three eighths of an inch seam allowance, whereas the rest of the garment has a half inch, except the hems, just so you know that. So. Then the other thing I wanted to do is take in this. I wanted to take in the shoulder and then taking the back. And I was like, wow, exactly what Malin said. <laughs> Maybe I should just go down a size, which is nuts to me. Because when I look at the chart and I use their calculator, it told me very clearly to use the size 16. The amount I am taking out would easily put me down in the, their 12. And that's, so what do I do? Do I, start with the 12, still do the small bust adjustment, or do I just continue fitting what I have here because I know what I'm dealing with, right? So I think that, um, I think this, those, these types of questions depend on how much time, how much rabbit hole you want to climb down, and how much fabric you have. So personally, I think like if I had all the time and fabric, I think I would just cut out a size 12 and just see, just see what it's like. Nello, Sydney, how's it going? You see gloves. <laughs> you know Ray, she's always pushing the boundaries. <laughs> um, I was saying, it did, Barbara. Yeah, their, their, their calculator told me to cut a size 16 with a 14 hip like um, taper to a size 14 hip and use a, do a small bust adjustment. Now the, the small bust adjustment was obviously very needed now that I see the difference, but what it didn't do was take out all the volume up here. So I had a lot there, a lot. So part of me wants to just stick with what I have because I know what I'm dealing with right now. And you know, like, Cutting and sewing a whole size 12 is really just an experiment in comparison because I'm definitely gonna have to make changes to that as well. So it's time-wise, it's about the same. And fabric-wise, I don't have a ton of fabric. Like right now, I'm kind of getting into some canvas that I, I, I'm going to use for this today. But after that, it's like I get into some kind of like, I have this weird orange stuff that's not quite canvas, you know? So 
Nice, Eliza. You're like, class is done. I'm out of here. I got, I got a live stream to be on. <laughs> yeah, you can hear what's happening. Yeah, there, there you go. I haven't done anything yet. So um, I think that calculator is pretty cool though, Barbara. And yeah, I did. I totally trusted it and tried it out because I appreciated that. There's, so here's another um, idea I have. So what if um, I change my armhole, thinking of, thinking of other things that you can look at two different ways to do the same thing, right? So, so, you know, I'm thinking, oh, maybe I should just go down a size and still do the small bust adjustment. Maybe that would solve everything, right? Maybe I just, or, or I just keep going down this path of just changing what I know, right? As far as the sleeve goes, if I make my armhole essentially smaller because I want that more increased mobility, is it going to make my sleeve need to be smaller as well? Well, there is a full bicep version of the sleeve. So I was thinking like, okay, that's my backup plan. So when I made the changes um, of trimming, like bringing in the shoulder here, so here's the armhole right here and here's the shoulder line. So on this one right here, I brought all this in on the front and the back. Okay, I also took out some volume through here, through here. So I made this armhole quite a bit smaller, like it kind of did this, you know, probably like that. And then I brought this whole thing in. Um, curiously, that actually didn't change this, the seam line length of the armhole very much. So I could use the same sleeve. So, so far, I have not changed the sleeve at all. <laughs> oh, really, Sydney? <laughs> I mean, isn't that just like life right there, right? That whole thing. You used their calculator the other day and it said, please email us for support. Oh, is, is Nancy here? No, no. I had something to tell her about a pattern company that I saw will grade down in sizes. Um, if you guys see her, remind me to say, tell her that. Because we were talking about there's ones that just aren't small enough. You, you started your lunatane, kind of squared off and lengthened it. Cool. I'm wearing one right now underneath my, this is my very first Charlie Captain. And if you haven't sewn this, it's quite deep, deep, like V-neck. And so I, I always wear a camisole under this one because, you know, I'm bending over doing like pattern stuff sometimes. So, so I'm going to, right now, I'm going to stick with my pattern and kind of move forward. <clears throat> But I think that there's a lot of value in just changing sizes too. So do with that what you may. Um, and I'm going to figure out what I need to do right now. Well, I already figured it out, but I'm gonna do that right now. So right now I have my same four body pieces out here of the back, side, back, the front. Um, the only thing I've done to these pieces since I saw you last was I ended up cutting off it at view B. Just got rid of all that extra tissue so I don't have to worry about it. I just felt like that was this, I just need less on the table. Oh, oh, do you mean the Reynolds? The Luna's love notions. <laughs> right, Lynn? Hi, Lynn. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, let me change it to live chat. Maybe I missed a few of you. <laughs> it really does feel like you've been called the principal's office. The last thing I want to do is email someone and say, um, my size isn't, <laughs> like, you know, like we're all kind of like, what about my size? <laughs> okay, so here's my, oh, oh do you guys want to see also the difference? So this is the one, all I've done to this is do a small bust adjustment. And I thought you'd be interested to see what it looks like. So this is the line you would cut. So there's excess paper beyond this line, right? This one doesn't have excess. So I'm going to line this up at the point up there and kind of center it. So you can see what happens with the small bust adjustment. And you can see really what it does is it makes a, brings down your armhole a little bit. 
that could maybe change the mobility. You know, why, why is that hovering over? Oh, there we go. We're okay. It shortened it a little bit, which we knew it would do. And it really just brought it all in through here. I don't see, like, I, I think like, when you're thinking about your bus, I think what you picture happening isn't quite the drastic difference that you think it might be. You know, it was really subtle things make a big impact. So here's my tissue paper here. This is the original, this is the new. And then on this side, here is my paper. So it's basically proportionally a little bit smaller. Yay, Sarah, that's awesome. <laughs> Where's, what, what, a knit Luna tank from Helen's. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. Wait, you can, wait, there's a knit tank top, but you can do it in wovens? Anticipation. <laughs> that was, that was very perfectly written. Oh, that's a good tip, Sydney. You see, you guys see that about the Luna taint? Do you cut it on the bias? Or is it like a loose tank? I'm not wearing a tank, I'm wearing a camisole. There we go. All right, let's get this out of the way here. Um, I'm gonna put some uh, paper behind this. I'm sick of dealing with the tissue paper. We kind of all knew I'd get there, didn't we? <laughs> right, Danny? Oh my gosh. That was a little painful to watch, wasn't it? Oh, that's cute. That sounds really cute. Cut a piece of paper for each piece. It was so satisfying to only uh, print out one size of those two pattern pieces yesterday. <laughs> Tape this directly on here. Let's start with our back anyway. I made myself a nice little list of things so I could keep it straight. I this has been on my mind a lot. Like I'm I'm really thinking about lots of different things in regards to this. Okay, here's my list. <laughs> oh, nice, Nicole. That's pretty cool. Those will be really cute. Sydney's the Piet Pietra um, ambassador. <laughs> Um, how's the lighting look? Would you guys like a little bit zoom or maybe a little bit of a zoom? Let's see here. Maybe like that. Is that enough for you guys? Um, I'll just brighten it up a tad, maybe. Yeah, white tissue paper is just not great, is it? 
All right, so uh, sometimes when I cut a piece off of something that I've already sewn, I you know write notes on it and then I pin it and I, I save it just in case. And this little piece right here happens to be the, I'm pretty sure this shoulder here, yeah. Right here on the bodice. So I actually just know I need to trim that much off there of my back shoulder there. And then I have removed some at the center back seam. So my center back things I need to do, center back, center back. So the other thing you need to think about doing all these changes, this is for me the most nerve wracking part is how is it gonna affect your lining pieces? So that's a nice zoom amount, good, okay, good. Um, <clears throat> and admittedly, I will sit there and go down this really intensive fitting rabbit hole and then I'm like, oh shoot, how does this affect all those pieces? How many things have I done differently? And so if you haven't started your fitting journey, it might be helpful for you to compare your pieces. Compare your front to your front lining and see how, where are the differences there? And that way, if you make so many changes to your pattern piece, you could just apply those differences from the lining to your front to make a new lining piece. That might be what I do in a few cases. I've, on, I'm, I've only affected four p pattern pieces, but these four pattern pieces affect a lot of different pieces like hem facings, inner facing, lining, all that kind of stuff. I still need to redraw my welt because obviously that made the, the welt um, slit opening indicated on the front and the side front get smaller. So I would need to adjust that. So don't forget that you could be affecting things. So maybe then it's worth just going, I'm gonna try a smaller size and then that way, in fact, now I'm thinking maybe I should just try the smaller size and then that way I um, may be affecting fewer pieces. So think about that. Right now I haven't changed anything on here. So as long as I do the exact same things to my lining, we're good, right? All right. So I'm gonna measure how much I've been pinching this in here. I'm also gonna measure where I started, because I started pretty high up. Don't forget also to put your shoulder pads in there, like Lynn said yesterday, that was such a good reminder. So look at this, see? I did a adjustment here, and then this part right here is pinned. So it's about the same. I really took it in. It's about an inch and three eighths at the waist. And I start this about six and a half inches down. Can you see this? That dark, that big enough? Maybe I'll do something a little heavier. Just go for the Sharpie, right? Yeah, I mean, look at how much I'm removing. That makes me kind of nervous. Look at that. This is partly due to my backwards hip tilt, you guys. This is, this is what I deal with with it. I really want to blend this in though because I got a little bit of a tuck at the top there. I didn't even take as much off as I wanted. I'm a little nervous about taking that much. But I'm not surprised, honestly. This is exactly what I always need to do.
All right. And then the back shoulder. Oh, where'd my little, eh, I can't lose that little piece. Did I push it off the back of the table? I know it was sitting there. I th thought in my head, you should pick that up. Oh my God. I really did just lose that little piece. All right, well, pretty sure I know what I wanna do. So I'm gonna take off about 3 eighths of this shoulder. I'm gonna blend it in. I'm trying to blend it. It's hard to do this with a Sharpie. It's so inaccurate. All right, so let's label these. Center back, shoulder, center back, waist. I'm gonna use these pieces on my lining. I'm also gonna staple this. Since when I cut this out, it'll fall off the, the uh, paper. Some of the other things you wanna look at when you're fitting things like uh, this blazer or anything is where are these lines at on you? So is the side seam actually in, on the side seam in the spot that you want it? So that's sometimes a good indication of how you want to remove fullness or add it. It's Cause you can go, okay, well I'm removing all this to the back. Is it gonna pull my side seam to the back? And that you don't want that, right? You don't wanna borrow from the front and pull it to the back. So think about that when you're doing it. I always look at this because, like I said, I always have to remove a lot through my back waist, and then I need to add some to my front waist. This is taped on here. Is this taped right here? Yeah, okay. I don't usually cut stuff with these scissors like this. All right. We're gonna clip these. <laughs> Save them all over there and be really careful about what you do with those. Okay, we have our center back. Nice, Lynn, that's exciting. Um, side back has no issues, right? No issues to the side back. Because that was the other thing I was like, do I need to take out that back here at the, these uh, princess seams or here? And it really felt like it was in the center. All right, so we can actually put this piece aside as well. Now let's get to our center front. Oh shoot, let's just print, let's just put this on the paper. Let's be kind to our frazzled self, <laughs> right? I knew that went badly. have to make sure your staples <clears throat> always go different directions. Things can shift under a staple. All right, I'm just gonna do that. And then let's look at our front. What kind of fabric are you making your blazer out of, Lynn?
So one of the things I want to do with this one, I need to take out quite a bit through here at the armhole bust and I need to add back some girth through the front waist. And so I took it off of the side front, but I think I want to add it back to the front front. <laughs> Let's look at where these princess seams are hitting me. Maybe I want to add it to the side front, which is where I took it off. Yeah, and I could see that because on my dress form, which you probably can't see, uh, my princess seam is way over here. And, but that princess seam is my apex line. So it's not exactly where I would probably put out, put my uh, princess seam, because it goes straight over my apex. You can kind of see, can you see this little pin here? Oh. I'll, I'll put the full screen. Oh, oh okay, cool, Lynn. <laughs> All right, so maybe you can see this princess seam here. So when I got my Beatrice, it doesn't have these lines drawn on there. And so you get to establish where you want those yourself. And so I made this cover, which adds a little bit of like, you know, it adds to the size a tiny bit. And it also makes things, it makes things not glide on here perfectly. So it can feel like it doesn't fit as well, but that's just the nature of the fabric, not the um, fit. So yeah, separate that. And so here's my princess line right here. And if I look at this jacket on here, when I put this jacket on me though, it fits a little, I fill it out more. So here's this princess line. And I'm thinking that if I added to the side front here, cause see my, like my side seams right over my side seam. You know, honestly, yeah, I just feel like it needs to be added here to the center front. This all looks good to me right here. I don't really want to monkey around with that. So my idea is to add it from this point down and swing it over a little bit. But I'm a little nervous about that. <laughs> so let's see, let me just think about this for a second. I want a pencil right now. So this is the length line of where that waist seam hit. See right here? This is where it was. So this all matches like this. And when you do this small bust adjustment, you can see here's the little dart that you take out. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, you guys are gonna start shouting at me, I know. Here you go. All right, so here is the line right here. So you can see I pinched this up a half inch like this. So I shortened the front blazer and that's because I needed to reach this amount when you slash here and here and you do the small bust adjustment. Here's the dart that I created, right? By getting rid of some of the fabric there. It raises up this lower portion of the side front and that's how much it raised. I kind of want to make sure to like, I should have only lost this little half inch right here, but it felt like more when we were sewing it. Like I, I felt like the, the, the notches were meh when I sewed it together. Totally fine though, okay. I think it was just a weird thing. All right, so if I wanna add two inches, so I need to add an inch to just this piece right here. How could I do this where I don't have to change the length of the seam and not add a flare, you know? So I'm kind of thinking what I could do is just move this line out and blend it from up here. 
but I don't want to add to my um, bust up there. I really like it to be carved out right there to give me that shape. Maybe I should, I could split the difference. Just do a half inch on each. That seems more reasonable, you know? And then up here, this is all kind of rumpled. I, I taped it back, the point that extends back over the uh, curve here. But see, this is my original cut line right here. That's why none of that changed. Only this little length piece right here. And we're still gonna take off more. We're gonna take off more. It's a lot. I didn't bring up my armhole. I'm thinking about sleeve mobility right now. And I also want to take in the shoulder like I did on the back. So let's do that first. Let's take off this 3 8 here. Well, let's tape it to my piece of paper. Let's make it more stable. So is the Ikea fabric this, the soft uh, suiting? Or is that your sample? I can't wait to hear how it goes. Did you use their sizing calculator, Lynn? don't want all these fit changes to make any of you feel like well this is too big of a project I want you to know that me doing it live on camera makes it seem like such a bigger process than it really is if it were just me sitting here doing this hey Terry um, this would go so much faster uh, you wouldn't have to hear my inner monologue you would have your own monologue so you're probably like trying to listen to your inner monologue versus my inner monologue, which kind of adds like a whole layer of like, oh God, this is just way too much. Just remember that this will be so much more straightforward when you're dealing with your fit issues. It'll be a lot simpler. So, how's it going, Terry? Where are you at in your blazer process? I know you were already like cutting and sewing a prototype like a few weeks ago, right? So I had the idea of like, maybe I would just like cut this out <laughs> here for my monologue. <laughs> you guys need uh, more to do in life. <laughs> I'm glad someone gets to witness my monologue. <laughs> Hi Susie, how's it going? You're making the style art Janie? Okay, so is that the jacket? Is that a jacket? I wanna make some style art patterns. I hear their, their instructions are a little uh, like minimal and that it might be helpful for folks. So so my, one of my ideas was just like to cut this like rectangle off here. I just drew like a loose rectangle and then just move it over, right? But that really just complicates what I wanna do. Honestly, I just need this fullness to be here in my belly, right? And then we're gonna blend it in. And I think that you know, here's my bust apex. See, it says that. This is really that narrower spot here. So if I want this fullness to be truly at the hem of this jacket, you need to find where that is. And I think that, that the fold line for this hem here is right here. It is, look, because here's a half inch seam allowance. So this is the bottom of your jacket half inch up from this round edge, which is one and a half inches up from this little rectangle here. <laughs> is that true? <laughs> what do you mean, Nicole? <laughs> oh, you mean that's what I would do if I was sewing one of those? <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> you did, you, uh, you did the muslin
you did the muslin and made the changes to your pattern, then cut out your hymo for the under structure, trying to decide if I should block interface me. Oh, cool. How is the fit of the muslin on a scale of one to 10? That's an interesting question. It was a little large through right through here. But honestly, like when I first put it on Susie, we were all kind of like, oh, it's a jacket. Was any, did, would anyone like to see <laughs> Sarah? <laughs> Um, would anyone like to see that video? I have the video pulled up if you want to see me wearing it. Um, if you're kind of late, I'm not sure where you guys are at. Let's see. I'll show you one more time. So here is my fit video. I didn't know I'd be showing this, but then at the end I was like, maybe I'll show this. That's why I give a little smile. So I really wanted to see what it would look like on the back. Can you see that looseness? But see how snug it is across my back hip? That's because it's taut across the front and I have it buttoned. What you can't tell is how loose it is, like right there where I pin it up here. It doesn't look like it over here, but it really is. It's like, you, like on the dress form, you could stick my whole hand in there. So that small bust adjustment really takes it out of the lower part. And so like back here, yeah, so I need to take that out. And then over the shoulder, I need to bring the shoulder in. I'm not bringing in as much as I see there. Same exact sleeve. So those are some of the changes I'm doing. <laughs> um, no, it says just to, when you're doing it with a princess line, you just do it on the side front. Hi, Tanya. I don't think I've seen you in a bit. How's it going? I'm caught up. Okay. All right. So let's see here. So I want to take out about three quarters of an inch through here. Boy. All right. And I want to add about a half inch here. So I need to make sure that this half inch is right here at this fold line and kind of in general through here. So if I can kind of, you know, taper it, maybe starting up here. And then this really needs to taper by the time it gets to my bust. Like I know that. It can go a little past, but not much. <laughs> I just feel like these changes are kind of drastic, to be honest. That, oh my gosh, look at this. Nice. Yeah, I'm glad you're here. Looks like a solid 8 out of 10. Yeah, I think, Susie, you know, if I say I um, just sewed it right out of the envelope without doing the small bust adjustment, it would be pretty big through here. And if I didn't make these changes, I still think it would be wearable, but it would kind of bug me every time I put it on right through here. You know what I mean? All right, so let's see. Let's move our notches. And I need, I'm gonna need to double check these notches as well because uh, they're kind of in a different spot now. This one stays the same. Here is the welt pocket, which is obviously now, I mean, thankfully I'm adding this half inch and this one inch back over here. So now maybe I won't even have to adjust the welt pocket. So that's good. So what I'm doing to this, I need to save all this for my lining piece here. So, can you see that okay with the pencil? I'll do it now in the Sharpie so you can see. And then I used my hip curve to kind of establish this fit line here. Mm 
Okay. Center front, center front. We're gonna keep that for the lining pieces and then we need to adjust this right here. You can also use a French curve, but the hip curve is, is great for doing really long, uh, straighter, flatter curves, like, like more like your hip can be compared to an armhole. And that's what the uh, French curve is usually for, is the armhole. I'm trying to see where my tissue paper is. It's right here. I wanna make sure I blend into this point, but I need to, I'm actually cutting it here. So what I need to do, hmm. I'm gonna add my little tail back here, like that. And that's a half inch seam line right here and that's how I knew where to do that. This is half inch right here. This is my cut line now. All right. <laughs> this is a, it's gonna be good, right? Yeah, right, it's easy, I think so too. Hi, Hannah. Oh, interesting, you had to do the same thing. Hey, Martina. Yeah, so this is <clears throat> the biggest thing I did was the small bust adjustment to this pattern piece. And so I ended up printing out the original size here. So I'm gonna compare this to the lining pattern piece to see what changes need to be made to make it into a lining pattern piece. And then I'll probably just copy this and do that. So I'll show you guys that for sure. Okay, let's put this pattern piece on here. <laughs> I like the phew, I made it. It's the first day of school for my sister, one of my sister's kids. And it's interesting, um, oh shoot, I'm kind of going off the paper over there. It's interesting because, um, eh. like one of them has a first day today, no wait, uh, what is it? It's like they skip a day, it's really interesting. It's hard to keep track of. And then I was like, wait a minute, you're gonna get to be alone at the house soon. <laughs> When was, when did that happen last? They have a new kitten, so I bet the kitten's really looking forward to the kids going back to school. <laughs> All right. I'm stapling it because once I cut it off the of this paper, like I cut it out, it'll most likely just fall off this white paper. So I'm just gonna staple it on here. Old, uh, yeah, you know, like old tricks, right? You, you don't forget when that, your pattern just falls right off and you're like, oh, that's right. I forgot that'll happen. All right, so here's my half inch I'm adding to this belly region here. And then we're gonna take off three quarters. That's how much I took there. Oh, it feels like like fall, yeah. Wow, oh, three eighths. <laughs> miss my one. <laughs> what? <laughs> They, what was their response? The seam allowance was eight millimeters. That's an eighth, like a little over an eighth of an inch. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I think that's a metric conversion thing. <laughs> wow. Yeah, they take this time to get into everything. They know, they know when you wanna do something that is not focused on them, they know. It's like a sixth sense, you know? 
All right, so here is my three quarters I wanna remove, and then I'm going to swing out this waist here. Let's just use my hip curve again. And look and see what do we want here. So I really don't wanna lose the, you know, the roundness of the bust. I'm going to try and go just past like that. So if you can't see, I'll draw it in a different color in just a second. <laughs> yeah, she's her enrollment dropped. <laughs> do I want to do that kind of? Mm, I don't know. Sometimes I go halfway and then I kind of flip it. Oh wait, I need to get to this. I was like focused on this red line. I don't really need to do such a drastic thing then. Mm, I don't really like that. This one's going up to about this notch right here. So let's allow ourselves that. Do I want that shape? Hmm. I kind of want it a little bit straighter. Where's my ruler? Hi, Amy. How's it going? I'm pretty excited about fall too. Like I, I, it was my night to sleep in the cottage last night and I leave the door open and it got really cold in there. Oh, did the stream die? No? Uh-oh, you guys, did your, is everybody here still? Were you guys letting Malin know it didn't? You waiting for rain? It's good for, okay, yeah. Maybe just ref, tell her to refresh. Okay, it's on Malin's end, bummer. Okay. All right, so then pretty much got this about in the same here, right? So let's draw this one. So remember, we were focusing on this teal line here. Um, we'll make this one. Will pink show up better than the red? Not really, huh? Maybe green? No. I need a new color. I'll try the bright blue. Hello, quilting. I haven't seen you before. Welcome. <laughs> I almost cried. I have to admit, I have never had a pumpkin anything drink at uh, like Starbucks, but they do have their cream cheese pumpkin muffin. And I love that. And I was like, oh, I like that muffin. I didn't even want a muffin when I was there, but I got it. That's how they get me. All right, so here's my new line right here. Definitely gonna have to measure the seam and make sure everything's still lining up because I probably did change my length here. We're about to cut out and make another prototype, just so you guys know. I know I'm going kind of like measured and slow. All right, so let's look at our lines here. Right, so see if you can see them on the screen all together. So these line up here, right? So this notch here, this one, uh, this first notch, I'm about quarter of an inch away. And I think that's okay, because I am trying to add through the belly here and I'm gonna leave it carved out here. 
And then for the bust, I did take a little bit off of this bust here and that's okay because I needed to lose a little bit through here. Um, and then when I get through to this rounded part here, this notch right here is this one here. This one here is this one up here. Okay, so let's let's measure our seam line now and see what, what kind what's the damage. Pumpkin cream cold brew. So is that something you order or is it in like a can? I, I feel like I'm getting Sharpie on my face. Oh, okay, that's good to know. You got one of those rulers that looks like a, oh, that's cool. I've always wanted to try one of those. Those and, I, and those bendable rulers, I would love to try one of those. Okay. I gotta watch my expenses though. I, I can tell I'm like going a little bit over my monthly amount. I dipped, I dipped below my safe zone recently. So I was like, all right, you need to not do anything drastic. All right, let's see here. Let's draw my seam line on here so that I can make sure. I'm so used to using a see-through ruler, I can't imagine changing, you know? I'm just kind of, you know, used to that. I'm going to use an orange pen for my own sake here. All right, so we have, I'm gonna write down my amounts to each notch so I can transfer it over here. Eighteen and three eighths. You don't don't man, don't worry about the seam allowance here or here. And if you take it off on this one, take it off on that one. As long as you have the length of this seam, that's what we're going for right now. I love this part. This is like this probably is the part that makes a lot of people sweat. But this is where I'm like, ah, let's see. <laughs> um, I would like to start from here and go this way because I did my measurements going that way on the other one. So let's draw in my half inch seam allowance. I don't like this when it's a sleeve. I really hate it when the sleeve doesn't, uh, it's not symmetrical or something funky like that. It's kind of like ugh, pain. Oh, curve runner, yeah. Yeah, right, Sarah, that foil tip was pretty cool. The bendable ruler would work, but the foil, and you have to use like a bunch of layers. Like don't just take, don't be cheap about it. You need it to stay when you move, remove it and put it on the table. Plus it's gonna sit there on your table. You gotta deal with it like right away. All right, so let's run this on the seam line. Okay, we need a notch. Here, right? Eight. Ten and a quarter. Twelve and a half. Fourteen and three quarters. Ooh, that's well, that's a little more than I wanted. <laughs> to be off <laughs> 18 and 3 eighths. Oh, look at that. All right, so let's cut this piece out. making sure I 
actually cut, put in my um, notches there. All right, now let's put our seam line here and we're going to line it up. Mm, I'll leave that. We're gonna line this up at the notches. So this was the 18 and 3 eighths right here. So I'm lining this edge right here, actually right here, this is where, right here, this line right here, Oh, nice, Terry. That's great. So I'm taking this juncture here and I'm stacking it where it marked onto here when I measured up my seam there. And then we're just gonna, we're gonna line it up for a little bit of the way. So I'm just stacking the seam on there. So here we go. And so this is how much it's off right now, quite a bit. We, I wanted to take in this shoulder here. So I think I'm gonna split the difference. I'm gonna fill in a tiny bit right here. I, I saw when this was on my dress form, and I don't know if you can still see it. There is quite a bit of a curve that happens right here. Can you see that? So you see how this back kind of cuts across the back shoulder here, and it's, it's almost like the oval is tilted this way. So we'll just fill it in a little bit. And we're gonna sync up with that amount we're removing off the shoulder there. So let me show you what I'm doing here. Remember, this is the part I'm cutting off right here, remember, to match up to the back shoulder. So we're just gonna make a nice smooth transition with that line that we're cutting off. Look at that, armhole looks a little bit better. Okay. Where's my tracing wheel so we can trace this line underneath and continue it right here. And then let's put that half inch amount a little tag so it still looks like the original pattern there and we're good. All right, committing. <laughs> If you're kind of new to doing this kind of drastic um, measure, uh, change and seam comparison, I recommend, especially if you're not getting the measurement that you want, like say you're within a quarter of an inch, measure again. You just, you really can shift that ruler and make sure you're precisely measuring on the seam line. In the, and also it kind of helps if you go the way that's easiest to do it. So for me, it would have been easier to measure this piece from going from the top to, to the bottom. And on this one, I think I did it, yeah, same thing. I went from the bottom to the top because I work left to right. But it also means that my notches were, were measured from on this one from the bottom to the top and I needed it to go that way from here so I could line it up. I could have done my measurement first this way, figure out the total, and then went back and put in my darts, but I, I have enough experience to be able to do it all in one go. So just just make sure you're kind to yourself when doing those kinds of measurements and, and um, try again. That, that was our joke in the design room. If you were 
really, because we did some really technical garments and sometimes you would get something from the production floor and they're like, this isn't working. And they've been sewing it for months and you're like, why isn't this working now? Well, we just never told you, but now it's becoming a problem. We, we, we want you to look at it and address it, you know? So then you're like, great. Now this pattern's on my table that I've already been done with for months. And you didn't tell me that it wasn't matching because everyone was just kind of fudging it or whatever, it wasn't an issue. And then you're measuring it and you're like, well, how come sometimes I get the correct measurement and sometimes I don't, you know? I, you would get a second set of eyes. You usually don't try and drag in another pattern drafter to help you on your stuff because they're busy, <laughs> you know? And, <clears throat> and especially if it's your boss, you don't want them thinking you're second guessing your work or something. Cause I've had people under me not want to tell, show me that they're having an issue. And I'm like, dude, I make issues too. Let's just let's look, let's look on it together. Cause it's us as a whole, not just you. You're not on the front line by yourself. And so my, um, boss at the time when I would be like, um, can you measure this for me? And her joke was, what do you want it to measure? <laughs> and the first time she said that, I was just like, oh, I, we get each other. Like, I just remember thinking, exactly. Like, measuring can be such a fluid thing sometimes when you want it to be really precise and it can lie to you sometimes. So just be gentle with yourself if you're like, I just measured that and it was 10 and a half and now it says it's 10 and an eighth. It's, it, it, you just need to calm down, maybe chunk it up, make sure you're be doing the same thing from one side to the other. Like a common thing with armholes is that you'll take the seam allowance off at the side seam when you're measuring the armhole, but on the other one you included it. Fully typical, half inch different, there you go, you know. That's my pep talk in measuring. <laughs> Who needs a TED talk when you could have a sizing pep talk or a root measuring pep talk? <laughs> All right, let's cut out another prototype. So one thing I kind of want to do is use the sleeve that's already on here. Um, I'm gonna go get my seam ripper because it won't take much to remove it. And I think that this would be well, it's a way for me to save a little fabric too, and also a way for me to prove that I haven't changed the armhole. Oh, I haven't measured my armhole yet. These poor sh shoulder pads are gonna be so well used by the time I'm done. Okay, we need those still. And let's just pop the sleeve off. I have sewn it on here twice, so I may have more than one back stitch. Of course, I immediately come across one of them. There I go, stretching out my uh, <laughs> armhole. <laughs> All right, there's my sleeve. So we just need to cut out the body. And I'm hoping I have enough of this here. So let's see. <laughs> Ray, Ray, you really need to stop donating. You're way too generous. I mean, I guess saying, telling someone they're way too generous isn't a very, like, come on, right? But <laughs> you really are, you're far too generous. You want to draw the seam along, start going on the fabric, but that seems, Susie, if you need to do that, do it. There's nothing wrong with that. I, I've done that before for sure. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. Um, there we go. Let's see, can we get these pieces on this? I think I can get the fronts on this short piece and then the back. Ooh, I don't know, maybe not. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think I can. OK, 
Okay, I can get that one there, but I don't think I can get, I can't get two fronts out. Or two backs. I have this piece too. So maybe I will do the front um, in one and the back in the other. Yeah, what were we just sewing? And I was I was saying you need to be precise. Was it the welt? Okay. Can she do it? Barely. <laughs> the boss discussion. <laughs> yeah, I, I say go for it. If it makes you feel more confident to do something, definitely draw them on there. Just make sure that they'll come off eventually, you know. I've definitely even done it when I was employed places and just felt like I was losing my mind. And then, you know, you're learning that, oh, this fabric slips too much or maybe we shouldn't use this fabric in the line at all because it's too hard to cut. Why does my knife have a thing in it now? Oh, no, 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 no. It feels loosey goosey. So, have you uh, practiced um, utilizing the markings on your throat plate? Because I know for me, like, it is kind of hard to focus on the throat plate when I was trying to focus on like seam allowances and things. So, in other words, once you can trust what line is giving you the seam allowance you need. It helps a lot and I think it takes a bit of practice to know, okay, that's my 5 8 inch line and that's what it looks like and I can just look at that line while I sew because that's what I do. I stare at the line next to the needle because that's where I want my fabric to line up. Well, how? what, what do you like to mark with? Yeah, that soapstone pencil might be good for you. The one I got recently, I think I got it from either, whoops, I want this orange line, from Sailrite or Waywack. And it's a stone. It's a stone inside of a casing, like making a pencil. Yeah, you can do the Choco on black. That would probably be fine. Did they really only do these three notches here? Okay. Um, let's mark the roll line this time too. Oh, I could use that majiggy to do it. I could do the soapstone actually. Let's do both. I'm gonna do get the soapstone thingy and where's that, you know that white thing? You guys always know the name of it. Maybe it's already over there, shoot. Yeah, so it looks like, it looks like this. It's actually soapstone in there. Oh, you have a magnetic gauge? That's great. 
Well, what the heck? Where'd that thing go? All right, well, let's mark the roll line. I'm kind of curious. All right. This is nice for dark fabrics, you know? It's kind of like chalk, but it's not. All right, so there we go. We have this, we have our sleeve already sewn. It's gonna be much faster. We have some more fabric scraps. <laughs> yes, we're weirdos about fabric scraps here. That's right, Terry. You were saying something about that seam gauge. Oh, really? The chaco wears off. And see, my problem is yellow doesn't go away ever. There, that's a great, that's a great way to do that, Heidi. Washi tape also works. That measuring tape I have, <laughs> no pun intended. Like it's not a pun. It's like the um, this stuff right here. Um, you, you don't have to use it like this way. I use, you can use it, you know, parallel to your stitching and then you can move it, you know, get rid of it sometimes. All right. So let's make sure that this is, and then put this on here. Let's get rid of this extra paper here. I'm excited about this next prototype, but I admit I'm a little nervous. Are you guys nervous? <laughs> Wouldn't it be fun if we had a sponsor who was like, um, do all the experiments you want. We're, we're going to, we're going to pay for it. I would just love to be like, what happens if I do the smallest size with a regular bust, the smallest size with a full bust adjustment, and you get to like sew one of each and compare, not like a full blazer, but just the outside. I, I love that stuff. Cause sometimes maybe your fit adjust, maybe you have like a forward sloping shoulder and one of those might work better for you and you have you don't even know it. Your posture has something to do with it. All right. I'm glad I don't have to change the welt now. There. 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 Um, these pieces I'm going to compare to the lining with the original. And then we have, we'll do the back in a different fabric. This is gonna be my patchwork coat. You're excited, <laughs> right? I like that enthusiasm. <laughs> oh, the th oh wait, there's different types of uh, washi tape, Barbara. You can probably get another throat plate, Lynn. Wait, is that who said that? Yeah. My industrial is hit and miss. Like sometimes my industrial has metric. Sometimes it has imperial. Sometimes it has nothing. Sometimes it just has lines. Then you have to figure out, well, is this metric, imperial? What do these lines mean? And so I really I was not in the habit of looking at the lines of my machine because of that head to head of pat yeah like we did with the block wasn't that fun like comparing the different blocks this is actually this is my husband's shorts isn't it i think it is it's actually washed that's why i can tell so i'm gonna cut this piece of fabric off oh i'm watching a fun cute new show 
uh, on Hulu called um, Only Murders in the Building. <laughs> Is anyone watching that? It's pretty cute. It's got Steve Martin, Martin Short, Selena Gomez, Sting. It's cute. If you're into things like, you know, solving murders, it's for you. Because it's definitely about uh, people who bond over loving this murder podcast show. And their murder happens in their apartment building. I'm not giving anything away. The other day the chat was saying there are no new patterns. I hope some of the creators of the best basics will have you sew their patterns in more size and courage. So, yeah, that would be so fun. That would be awesome. Oh, interesting. I didn't know that. Hi, uh, Sarah. I was going to say Heidi, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, the other thing, what was I thinking the other day? It would be so cool to do a comparison of, God, what was it? The thing is, I think it's really cool, but then there isn't a lot of people watching. And so I worry that it's not what you guys want. Like, I know I just do whatever I want for the most part, but I do want to do things that are helpful. That's why I'm here. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cute, Amy. There's only, I think, three episodes so far. <laughs> the Paddington top got a lot of views. I was kind of surprised by that. But remember how we had that crazy thing where there were all of a sudden like 78 people in the chat on Saturday? I don't know what that was about, you know. I know that sometimes YouTube puts people like in, a, in the like recommended page. I don't know if they would tell me if that's the case. And maybe that's why we had a few extra people. And that's why that video in particular has so many views. Because it made me go, well, maybe I should do more peppermint patterns. Like, people need those th sew-throughs. Um, I think also doing free patterns is really nice. Because this stuff, it adds up. Why? Oh, I'm, I'm going the wrong way. I'm like, why does it keep getting further away? Because you're pulling it further away. Yeah, and I just got a little like notification on my page from YouTube saying, you know, you making all that extra video content was really awesome. Your views are up. And I'm like, did I make extra video content? Maybe it's because I just did the knit um, how to's. But gosh, I didn't get that notification when I was doing all the Friday sews. You know, and that's like four more videos a month minimum. Maybe I, I sometimes think their analytics are delayed too. Like they're talking about something that happened two months ago. <laughs> I feel like that's really the case sometimes. <laughs> so I didn't measure the armhole, which was a really bad, bad pattern drafter thing to do. Let's check it out real quick before I I'm sitting at the machine and we get an unfortunate surprise. What would we, what would we have changed? We would have changed, I still think we might be okay. I think I'm gonna have to take some of the sleeve out. Like I think I'm gonna have to decrease some of the seam line, but because we brought in the shoulder, that makes the line, the opening a little bigger but then we cinched in that chunk at the bust. So right there. Oh, it's the computer. 
Oh, I know I have watched people that watched later, Beverly. But it is pretty shocking to see the views on that. It's like 924 already. The live streams usually don't get that high, that fast. Over time, they do. It's great. I'm not complaining. It's awesome. My ad revenue is down a lot, though. Like, I finally hit 300, which I never saw it go over 300. Because it tells me every day. Like, it's just there. I, I can't even help but see it because really when I go to answer comments, that's the, the, it's right there. And I'm like, okay, great. <clears throat> and now, and I never saw it get to 300, but then when they deposited money in my account, it was 300. I was like, that's crazy. I, I look at that thing every day and I never saw it. I got I saw it get up to 274. Usually when that happens, it'll say 274, but then I'll get like 240 or 250. So, I, cause it's this weird fluctuating number that's always moving around because it's looking at it in the last 24 hours, not your month or something like that, or maybe it's the opposite. So right now it's down to 213, but my views are way up. So go figure. It was Beverly, yeah. And free, truly free. Like you need to sign up for their newsletter, but that's it. I always thought their patterns were free if you were a subscriber to the magazine. I actually swear I subscribed to the magazine like two years ago and I just thought, oh, maybe I, maybe what I did, Sydney, what are you doing? <laughs> Thanks. What are you doing? You're already a patron. <laughs> patron. <laughs> you guys. Um, so yeah, so it's really interesting. Like I watch, I've watched tons of videos on all that stuff, but like on YouTube analytics and all that. And it still does not really tell me in a way I understand from what my channel's doing, you know? I think so, Beverly. I think it would be behoove me to make videos on patterns that are just released. It does, Amy, but don't worry about it. Really. Happy Thursday. <laughs> You're the one who needs the happy Thursday. I know work has been really tough for you. <laughs> or just a little bit overwhelming with all your training you're having to do. I think it does, Amy, but really don't worry about it. Like it's pennies, you know? So, um, I, I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to try and struggle with the sleeve and get it in there. I'm not going to measure it. Live dangerously, right? Ray is a good, bad influence. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> The magnetic field of the gauge is tiny, nowhere near the computer. Huh. Hmm. I mean, is that the same as like putting magnets near your iPhone and it doesn't really hurt a thing? Right? right? We thought it did, but it, it doesn't really. I don't know. You just finished making your muslin. You need to lower your apex. The gaping in the sleeve. I think you need to address the apex first. Um, can you do them at the same time? Yeah, I mean, I really think like, I recently also just changed my videos so that the ad is only before the video. In other words, it doesn't get interrupted. And I've been kind of curious, like, oh, because my revenue went up. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. Is that because more people watch the, the ad at the beginning? You know? Oh, it feels so good to sit down. My, my um, hamstring has been just crazy tight lately. It hurts. I don't think the camera is crooked, but. Okay, center back and side back. So here's my other crazy idea. Hi, Elena. How 
would you do both the same? Oh, lowering. Well, I think I think you're right. Lower the apex and then take out the amount. I don't mean just do it simultaneously, Donna. I just mean like lower it and then like don't sew a whole sample in between. YouTube is definitely all a big mystery. I think do it whatever is most comfortable to you. Do you think that pulling in that excess is going to change the apex? Then maybe you would want to do that first, you know? It's a little dark, huh? Why is it, oh, I moved, it didn't move the light. But look at, I didn't move the light on me today and it's fine. Lighting is also a mystery. <clears throat> so here's one of my other crazy ideas. I, I know that I talk about a lot of ideas I wanna do and I don't get to them all. It's not because I'm not trying. I just want you to know. And when you guys respond to something I'm interested in doing, it makes me do that far more soon. You know, like if I say, I'm thinking about making you know, um, my dream ideal dress pattern, customizing, blah, blah, blah. If nobody says anything, I'm like, okay, cool. I'm just going to do that on my own. I don't care if people don't want that. I just won't do it live or I'll do it later, right? But if I say what I'm about to say next and you're like, yeah, do that, <laughs> you know, it's going to make me go, oh, maybe I'll try and do that. So one of my crazy ideas right now is wh what it, can't I buy sewing machines and return them within a certain amount of time. Because wouldn't it be fun to compare machines? I don't ask for sponsorships, so I feel like I could be kind of candid. Not kinda, I'd be candid, right? We could buy the machine from someone, make sure we're clear on the return policy, try it out for a few things and return it. Or do you think that's bad? I think in a way it's great because then people can go, oh, hey, I've been interested in that machine. I'm not gonna break it or anything. And I, I wouldn't probably, I would probably make sure the company knew I was doing that because I don't wanna hurt an indie shop either. Maybe I could find a, sh a shop that would even send them to me and let me do it. You see, you're going to need more room in the sleeve and at the hip line. Oh, oh, the shoulders look good. Look, that's good. A hip line, that's easy. It does, Mafio. I'm sure it does, but I just feel like I'm not going to expect people <laughs> to do that. Um, I do have a left and a right, right? Yeah, I mean, you're right. I just don't really want you guys to do that. Yeah, like top <laughs> Yeah, I think it would be kind of, I think it would be kind of interesting. Oh, cool, Eliza. I'm sorry. I know you're really eager just to see how the fitting goes. Right now, I'm just sewing up my changes, Eliza, and then, so you're gonna get to see the best part in just a second. Yeah, right, Ray? I think so. I don't know, though. I'm such a tiny streamer, you know, that I don't know. I just think it would be fun. Right, Malin? Yeah, see, that's what I'm wondering, too. See, I know, especially when you write it that way, it's like, yeah, it does feel like, I don't know what, I'm getting content out of it, but you guys, I literally make like $1.50 on a live stream. Like, I I'm not making money, you know? There you go, Barbara. <laughs> Get a snack. <laughs> oh my gosh, Sydney, would they really? I'm not surprised, honestly. Yeah, win-win. I like that, Barbara. <laughs> All right, center back seam. I almost forgot. Is there, a, there's not a pleat back here, right? Yeah, I think maybe that's what I would do. I just think that this is what I think is gonna happen. I'll offer this. They'll be like, yeah, that's actually a great idea. We can even tell people to go there. And then they'll think about it. They'll go, oh, you're tiny. Hmm, 
Maybe I'll just ask someone who's bigger than her to do it. Yeah. No pleat. Thank you, Mafio. I appreciate you telling me that. I keep thinking I'm going to do all this and then I'm going to get through and I'm like, oh my god, there's a pleat at the back. I, I, I didn't notice one, but you just never know. Oof, I really took that in, didn't I? Okay, let's uh, do the front. We'll have our roll line on this one. Maybe I'll make that the inside so that when I roll it back, I can see the line. Right, right. Okay, so this goes, oh, well, there's a flaw in the fabric right there. I wonder who would be interested in that. And, and but I'm not talking industrial machines because, yeah, I'm, I'm not doing that. I'm just thinking whatever tabletop machine comes our way. What if I fall in love with machines though? Night, Malin. Glad you got to be able to come back. Sleep well. It is a test drive, true. Yeah, I think I would, I'd feel obliged to tell, to ask. God, there's so many machines out there. Where would you start? Maybe you could go like the, like pick a, a vendor, like say, why did I start from the bottom up here? There we go, I got it. See, when I say about, I keep these, these layers separate when I'm doing these really big bodice curves. Easy peasy. Okay, so let's, I'm gonna sew the shoulders together and I'm gonna iron this and then I'm going to um, sew the side seams and the sleeve. So we're almost done with our prototype. I think you could take one vendor and go like, oh, let's do brother and then find the, like a, an upper machine, a mid range and a low range and then compare them. Cause sometimes it's good to know, like maybe I could just get the low range machine, you know? <laughs> Nicole, sometimes that happens to me. It happened to me when I did this yesterday because I didn't check the seam length after my, my uh, small bust adjustment. And even though I only lost that half inch, it's still, I must've lost something somewhere. Yeah, true, Susie. You change your opinion completely from... Um, the clothing stores have the barons I sell in the stores here. What does that mean? Yeah, I think being up front. I, th I know that I would feel better about that. Like if I had not, I probably could have just done it, right? <laughs> You guys wouldn't have thought twice. But I was kind of curious, like, are, are we set on machines? Do we want to know more about machines? I don't want a new machine. If anything, I would like to try a uh, industrial with a zigzag and you guys probably could care less about that. Oh, it's not on. Shoot, sorry, my iron wasn't on. I usually warm it up before the stream. Look at that, it looks pretty good. Did you know that when you're knitting a sweater and there's bust shaping, they block the sweater so that there's a bust. You can put padding under there, or whatever. And then you, when you wet your sweater at the very end when it's all done, um, and then you, you know, lay it on your mat to dry, they shape it, mold it. 
like this. That's a nicely, that's a nice knitting pattern when there's a bust shaping for cup. All right, come on, iron, let's go. Do, 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 do. That's probably copyright. I probably can't hum that. I saw a streamer. He hummed a Van Halen song and uh, it got a copyright strike. <laughs> it's such a crazy world we live in right now. That line I'm getting there. Is dirt? Is that dirt? Let's get rid of all this wrinkles. I'm gonna open the seam allowance up. Press that. Something oddly satisfying about pressing your seams and pressing like open and um, pressing it from the right side. It feels kind of like you're doing something you're not supposed to, but then it it's so satisfying. You get to see it happen. There's my soapstone. Let me look at chat real quick. Yeah, right. I think low range machines would be great, Beverly. I totally agree with you. I would love to focus on those. I don't think they would toss it, Nicole. I'm just worried they would sell it used, devalued. Yeah, right, Nicole, I'm sure. Even if it was in the box sealed, we had to toss it. Oh my God. Yeah, I, I recently bought a foundation because I, like I said, I, I don't usually wear makeup, but I have been uh, this, this year because my rosacea has been so bad. And um, I bought a different one and you guys, I'm just at like, you know, Rite Aid. So <laughs> my expectations aren't high. <laughs> I wish I knew someone who knew a lot about makeup who would be like, Sarah, you could handle doing this routine right here, you know? Um, and uh, I bought something and oh my gosh, I was like, yeah, I, I can't wear this. And it's brand new and I know I can't return. I'm not going to return it because I'll, I'll get my money back and they'll just throw it away. And I feel bad about that, so... So it's just sitting on my counter. I don't know what to do with it. And there, those things are, ex oh jeez, those things are expensive. I don't wanna just keep experimenting. I'll just stick with the one I'm using. You gotta have a place for your hunchback. That's what this is right here for, for. You know, we live in a digital age. You gotta allow room for the ye old hump, right? That's what I'm worried about, Ray. I am totally wor worried about falling in love with a machine that does a perfect buttonhole at the touch of a button or something crazy like that. Oh, my side seams don't match. Well, very interesting. That's very interesting too, because this is the side front and it was short at the it was short at the top and so we filled it in a little bit. Now I'm feeling like maybe I should have added a little at the bottom. We'll have to look at that and see where it's lining up because I don't want to shift it. Why is that? That's crazy different. I remember I was like two and this was two inches longer than this piece. Maybe I should have added weird. 
I didn't change the side back. Maybe I cut it on the wrong line. Maybe I cut it on the wrong line. The muslin gives you Girl Scout sash vibes. <laughs> oh, the, uh, you mean like, like the color, the brownies? You're thinking brownies. <laughs> Try the Mac up for a month. Then if you return within 20 years, what's Mac up? Oh, makeup? <laughs> yeah, brownies. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, put the sleeve on, which is like broken in and rumpled. We have our gathering line in here still. Let's get rid of some of these threads. And this was the right sleeve, right? Pretty sure. One notch. Um, I don't see. Where's the double notch? Oh. I think this is the front right here. It has a notch here. Okay. So that means it's the right hand sleeve, which is this one here. Let's see. I didn't measure the armhole, so let's test it out here and see if I can get the exact same sleeve in there with these changes. I, I have a feeling I'm not gonna be able to. <laughs> we'll see. You can see the double notch. No, you couldn't. Where is it? This is the sleeve uh, underarm, so it's either here or here. There's only one notch. I'm pretty sure that this is the front. Let's see. That looks pretty manageable. See you, Delwyn. Hey, Delwyn, thank you for becoming a patron. I saw your uh, subscription this morning. And I hope your husband's okay. <clears throat> Have a good day. I'll send you a thank you soon. Wait, what are you talking about guacamole? You have rosaceous too? <laughs> Wait, does guacamole help? Asking for a friend. You've seen me ease worse. I was thinking the exact same thing, Nicole. <laughs> I feel like this is where I would excel, you know, at Project Runway, you know, sewing things pretty quickly. <laughs> they don't always have like the best sewists, but they're amazing designers, you know? So I would be rubbish at the design part probably. I would make things that were too, uh, too wearable, for lack of a better word. Oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> this is going to work. The sleeve set, really Terry? What? Do we need a sleeve pep talk, Terry? I 
I can tell when, like lately I've had a little bit of wine a few times a week and, and I, I even water it down. That's been aggravating it for me. This is a little bit wider than my half inch seam, so I'm gonna, my, my, my easing stitch there is a little wider, so we're gonna fix that right there. Okay, that, that was really easy and I didn't change anything with those stitches. So I probably could have even eased in more. So that's great. I, my sleeve did not lose any volume. And so if I still wanted more, so this is the other comparison I think that would be interesting to do is to do the sleeve with the full bicep. And I could probably attach it to this sample. I think that would be really interesting. He'd rather, <laughs> he'd rather hand stitch the entire blazer. Wow. Intensive pulsed light. Oh, really? Easy. I see what you did there. All right, let's see. Did I leave any pins in there? I thought I had two. Did I take them out already? Okay. All right. Let me iron the side seams. So there is this one prescription that my dermatologist gives me. It's called Phanacea. And it's a foam, you know, like hair mousse when you um, do hair mousse. It's just like that. Um, but the thing is, it's not readily available. So all I have are samples because uh, insurance companies hate medicines that aren't in typical uh, formats, not formats, but you know what I mean? Like, um, cause, cause the foam, they don't like the foam. Oh shoot. I, my seam allowance got pressed there. This was the same when I had to take a drug to uh, help boost my milk production because I had a brush reduction and when I was nursing there is something that you can take called motilium and in our country they have to compound it so I had to order it from Canada and Australia but it worked great okay I have a little tuck here that's so funny I got that tuck on my other one too all right moment of truth it dried out your skin Oh, interesting. Mine, um, where is the, there we go. Mine, it didn't really feel like it dried out my skin. You can see my rake over there. This is my thread right here. <laughs> but there's the, see this is a, wait. Uh, uh, this right here. Why can't I point? Okay, there we go. It's like this. No, oh my gosh, this thing is a rake for raking up the threads on my floor. And a dog bowl. So I found Phanacea that I could order it online. Okay, there's the roll line. Definitely feels closer fitting. How's the back look? Why is this longer though? It's so weird. I can't see because of the arm, my thread cradle arm. That's pretty good. That There's a tuck right here. So I got my a little pinched center seam, center back, a little pinched. Oh yeah, it does look a little pinched there, huh? All right, I'll do another video so I can see. These aren't the most flattering fabrics, huh? It doesn't even feel like I added two inches across the front. <laughs> I think because I took in so much at the back, but my mobility feels a lot better. And that is one thing I keep meaning to say, I keep starting to say this, uh, for those of you who are trying to 
Yeah, the center back seem, sounds like it doesn't look so good. Yeah, it does look. What is going on back there? Did I iron it funny or does it actually have a tuck in it? No, it's just acting weird. weird. Okay, so let's put it on the dress form. But <clears throat> one thing that I keep interrupting myself to say is that when you try on your blazer and it, you feel like it's a little too tight, wear it for a while. So I wore mine all afternoon yesterday and it definitely felt so much better. Like once I got used to it. So now nah, I think that's a, it's just a little too tight back there. Let's bring on over my dress form so I can look at it. I love this thing. I love being able to look at my back. What I need is a dress form that hangs from the ceiling. <laughs> so I can just pull her over because it's like, it's like trying to pull her through sand on the beach, on this carpet. Yeah, I, try, I think that that's just too high up. Look at that. Okay. The front looks pretty darn good though. Where's my, uh, the roll line is a, a little more than I keep thinking it is. This looks so much better through here. This is my only problem, and this is so much easier to deal with. Okay, I'm grabbing my steam ripper, which I cannot believe I left over here by herself. I mean, look at this, it still looks really full. Look at that, you see that right there? My little whoop de doo butt. Mash two different patterns. Yeah, I'm wearing the Charlie Kaftan. Nice, Ray. Yeah, mobility is so um, important with the sleeve. What are you two, Sarah? Are you interested in the mashup? Um, do you mean like um, like two like a dress and a top together, that kind of thing? I'd be down for that. So see this little whoop de doo I have right here. It's still, remember I was too shy to take out all that. So let's pin this here. And we'll let it out right through here. Maybe I could have taken it in over here instead. I was still kind of curious about this length difference. Like these two match perfectly and these two don't. <laughs> That's funny. I, this is looking really good through here. Cool, I'm feeling pretty good. All right, so, so the next step is to, I'm gonna fix this thing right here. And um, that's about it. And then check my length. And then make my changes to my lining. Look at that though, look at that sleeve, it looks pretty good. <laughs> Hi Vestigia, how's it going? <laughs> what Nicole? <laughs> I like switching out the bodice on one dress. 
Yeah, I, I, I like doing that. I don't do it a lot because I feel like it's, it runs the risk of people going, I came here for a tutorial on how to sew the Charlie Caftan, but you ended up sewing something completely different. You know what I mean? Because I used to do a lot more freeform stuff in the beginning. And then I realized like, um, Sticking close to the pattern helps people more. It may not be always what I want on my garment, but it helps them more and that's what I'm about, so. <laughs> ditch the whoop de doo <laughs> Oh, ditch it. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. Ditch the whoop de doo <laughs> You know what would be really cute is if it had two back vents right here. You know what I'm talking about? That, I think that's so feminine when I see the two vents right here. All right, and this helped a lot, just like, but see, I, I, I lose, see, I really want that shaping back there, but you know, I just don't think I'm gonna get it because I keep trying it and then it does this weird thing. And it's pretty far away. It's that far away from my back. Yeah, the, they did a good job on the sleeve. Pattern hack videos. That's true, huh? I, I think also my other hesitation is that I don't know what people want to hack. But that would be fun. Oh, really, Barbara? That's good to know. Yeah, because I don't really, I, what I like about them too is that it gives you movement and it might even kind of give you a little bit of a, sh a shape. But yeah, I don't want them to be pulling. So that's a good thing to think about, Barbara. How can I get more shaping back here? You know, I kind of like accentuating a little bit more of the little bit of shape I still have, <laughs> you know? The other thing to think about when you're fitting your garment is make sure that you have it on as symmetrical as possible. You'd be, ow, kind of surprised that uh, you'll fix something. And you'll be like, why did I fix that and I have to take it out? And it's probably because you had it on and it was like just shifted a little bit. That's what I'm thinking, Mafio. I'm thinking like maybe I just took too much in one spot. Yeah, and it was just too a bit. Hi, Janice. Are you ready for this? <laughs> this is, we're at the good part now. Okay, so let's, let's, um, I'm gonna button this to itself. This is the other thing when you're fitting a garment and you're doing it on a dress form, don't pin it to the dress form, let it hang free. That's really important actually. It can really distort the fit. You'll be doing stuff twice. All right. So I need to get rid of this little whoop de doo here. We don't need no stinking whoop de doos Right? It's so taut. It's, it's really taut across here. Here's my side seam. It's a little back on this side and spot on on this side. My center back is, here's my center back. So it's right on the center, that's good. I think I just need to do a little, a little bit. Spread the whoop de doo across all three seams, yeah. Well, I want to get rid of it there, but I think maybe taking it in just a tad back here. These are the worst pins for um, fitting on the dress form. 
canvas. Let's do a, just a couple here. My waist is like up here though, but I feel like it needs to be taken out right, right here. Okay, we'll just do a little bit on each side. Oh yeah, Elena? Gilbert Reynolds shirt dress hack, okay. Oh, that is really cute. I saw that, Elena. It looks just like the Rita shirt dress. Yeah, I love that. Let's we'll put a few in here. See, it's kind of like loose right here. See that? Yeah, it is. It's kind of loose through here. So maybe I'll take out a little bit. I'll pin it this time, turn it to the right side and check it before I sew it. Sorry, I'm trying to go fast. I feel like the whoop de doo is like mostly at the center back. I feel it here. I think it's because I'm angling this. Okay, what if I took out the whoop de doo? Now, you can see that diagonal line there. It does need to come out right here. Yeah, Gilbert dress. I love that camp style. I love shirt dresses. I'm, I'm a, such a sucker for shirt dresses. Did they really, Susie? Oh, that's awesome, Elena. That sounds perfect then. Yeah, the Ruffle Reynolds. Yeah, that's really cute too. She's having so much fun with that top. I'd like to see more love on the March top, but um, she's really into the Reynolds, <laughs> which I kind of appreciate. It's kind of cute. You, oh, you're curious about the Pona jacket, Carrie? But it came out looking like a lab coat, but it was fun. Did you make it in white? <laughs> Just don't wear black glasses with it, you know, or carry a beaker. Okay, that, that for me is hanging better, you know? So let's see. Okay, let's turn it to the right side. Oh, I forgot I need to take a quarter of an inch off my sleeve length, that's it. I'm gonna double check that right now. A white linen from Hearts, nice. <laughs> You're into a lab coat. <laughs> Mina dress, okay. I'll check it out. I don't have a Seamwork membership anymore. Okay, let's get it all situated and I'll turn. I like that how balanced this feels, you know, like it hangs everywhere nicely. Just think it's gonna be so much nicer in my real fabric. Okay, right, let's see. I'm not sure, Eliza. I'm thinking about it. Is that looking a little better? It's pinned, so it's gonna look lumpy, you know? I'm looking a little better. How do you find my affiliate link? Um, such a great question. It's in a, I, I don't think it's on my, oh, it's on my website if you go to one of the wardrobe by me patterns. And my something I think is funky with my website right now because I couldn't get on there last night. I need to let them know. 
Um, and then um, it's in the description of each Wardrobe by Me video. It did, it looked better. I can't see it. Okay. I think I'll, um, yeah. So yeah, I need room for lining and I need room for a garment. We're getting there, right? We're getting there. I'm excited. Very excited. I think like I could use a little bit more room through the body for a garment, but if I actually pinch the amount that's extra, there's enough. Oh, nice, Lynn. That was, yeah, that was really nice of them, wasn't it? Nope, I keep hitting that. It's fully lined. Um, I'm gonna do a slick fabric for the sleeves and then a linen for the body. Linen is very thin. The canvas is, it's drapey, but it's a little thicker than this. It's thicker than this for sure, but it's drapey. It's not as stiff as this, but the linen is very thin. And then I'm gonna use a, I don't know what the content is. I imagine it's like a polyester as for the, the sleeves and a pale pink that I have, like a lining, just so that it's slippery. Although when I see people cuff up their jackets and you see a bit of the fabric, that's so cute. Maybe I could put floral at the bottom so if I cuff it, you see that. You see that. A vest UFO, nice. Yeah, it's almost vest season. I love vests. I love wearing vests. They're, they're so useful and um, for like three season clothing, you know. I could have so many vests. They're just like great. All right, I'm making sure I didn't miss anything you guys said or asked. It would be, I would, Seeker Flower Cup, yeah. Yeah, I think I gotta remember to do that. I think I, I love the idea of that. Cause when I see, when people show off their jacket pattern, maybe is this, did that, did I need more than that? I see that came undone. Um, and they show that, the, my first thing is like, I don't wanna see a picture of it cuffed, I wanna see what it looks like. Um, but then I always like the way that looks, so it's really cute. You're stuck on the lining and the structure. Okay, so is it fully lined? Is it just a clean, like a no collar? We're talking like just like woven, not like a polar fleece vest, right? And is it a button front? I can definitely walk you through that. Oh, that's awesome, Elena. That's funny. The vest is your sewing favorite, Terry. <laughs> I like making vests too. All right. I think we're doing good. So Saturday, I will make sure all my pieces are ready to cut in fabric and maybe I'll start cutting it out. And then I can start sewing next Saturday, which sounds great, doesn't it? Um, my only thing is that I, I'm kind of curious about cutting or uh, washing my floral so that it won't get as wrinkly. I wanna try that technique I've seen people talk about where you wash it but you don't throw it in the dryer and then you iron it dry. But I know that there's something something other the other little step you do maybe you do it with a dry iron or steam iron or something like that maybe it's, it's totally dry iron um and um i want to make sure i do that because i think it'd be a great experiment to see if i can prevent wrinkling when i wash it i want to kind of i think i washed my jacket fabric twice but i'm going to make sure i'm going to take it home and wash it again oh my gosh i've had that stuff sitting there for like months 
and now here I am taking it home to wash it like I didn't prepare. But I wanna make sure that it doesn't shrink anymore, you know? So I think I'll wash it one more time. It's just a cotton, so. Cool, well this was good, I feel, I'm feel i feeling good. I, I'm gonna um, pay, maybe put another shirt, maybe I'll put another shirt on over my dress. Oh no, I have a sweatshirt here. I'm gonna put my sweatshirt on and I'm gonna keep trying this on and then we'll make the final pattern adjustments by Saturday. Um, so those of you who are doing the sew along, you have time, you like, you don't have to cut it out Saturday. You have till like next Saturday to cut it out. And I may not cut mine out on this Saturday either. So don't feel rushed. There's plenty of time if you wanna go along together. So yeah, it's linen, I'm sorry, it's linen. The, my lining is linen, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and so what I've seen, Elena, one of the techniques is wash it. There's like two techniques I've seen, and I wanna look at both. I think one of them you wash twice, but I don't know what you do in between. I'm not sure if you let it air dry and then the next time you wash it, then you uh, iron it dry, or if it's you wash it, iron it dry, wash it, air dry, I can't remember. And then the other one is just doing it once and dry ironing it to prevent wrinkles. On the inside of my jacket, it's really not that critical, but on like a, like on that Piper tunic I'm gonna be making, I think like if you were doing a linen, that would be such an excellent one to do, like prevent the linen wrinkles, right? That would be so great. I don't have, I, ha I haven't decided on my fabric for that. It'd be really nice if this, I have enough of this floral. <laughs> I think I will. I have a lot of it, so it's at home right now. All right, I will see you guys Saturday, sound good? Thanks for coming along on this fitting journey. I hope that fitting yours is going really well. So hang in there and um, yeah. Yeah, well that's what I'm wondering, Eliza, I'm not sure. I have to find out. My friend knows one technique, but she does this with all of her fabrics and she's a quilter. She washes everything and dry irons it. Irons it dry. I was like, wow, I can't imagine. I have an ironing board here too, but I'd have to do it at home because of the washing machine and stuff, so. All right, cool, well, thanks you guys. Bye, I will see you guys Saturday. Have a good Friday and good rest of your week. Um, if it's your kids' of, or your first days of school, hang in there, you got this. Teachers too. <laughs> Hire iron first before washing. Yeah, that might be it. That might be it. You hot iron it, then you wash it, then you iron it. Oh my gosh, I gotta figure this out. <laughs> All right, you guys. Um, I'll see you guys Saturday. Oh, I'm gonna keep reading your comments though. <laughs> Bye.